So I was ready to walk out and say, God, I guess for whatever, whatever reason, this time, you're not going to heal me. I don't understand, but for whatever, this time, you're not going to do you it. You know, I knew the scriptures. I knew Jesus says, you know, in Isaiah 53, that by his stripes, I'm healed. I knew, I knew it, but yet it didn't seem like it was working. Today on The Miraculous Life, you're going to hear about how to overcome discouragement when you've been praying for a while. Welcome to The Miraculous Life. I'm Steve Hannett, your host, and I want to tell you, stop what you're doing, shut things off, just focus in on this show, because today we're going to be covering the topic of what to do when you feel like Jesus has let you down. We've all hit those moments when we feel like God isn't coming through in prayer, and I've got a very special guest today. She's my wife, Pastor Kate. And we're going to unpack something that happened to us. And I believe it's going to help you to change your life. So with that, let me welcome Pastor Kate. I love you so much. She's my wife and I love her. Why don't you take us back all the way to when we had our first son. Why don't you tell the story of what happened to you and, uh, and what the doctors were saying. Well, we had just had our first son and everything in the labor was was great, uh, but towards the end, uh, he had come very quickly. So the nurse actually delivered the baby, remember? And because it came so fast, they had said that I had some bruising. So mm -hmm. a few days in the hospital and things were not feeling right in my body. Um, specifically, I was having trouble going to the bathroom and they will not release you from the hospital mm -hmm. unless you go to the bathroom. And so here we have this brand new baby, first baby, breastfeeding, learning how to mm -hmm. deal with a new baby, yet I was having a very important physical problem. Mm. And so we were praying in the hospital, asking God for healing, but the healing wasn't coming. So after five days in the hospital, they sent us home and I had to wear a catheter. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, God, I don't understand, you know, and they said, well, maybe because he came so quickly, you just need to give your body a few days to rest. Mm -hmm. And then in a few days, you can come back and we'll check to see if now you can go. And this is something people take for granted going in the bathroom. I mean, how many times mm -hmm. a day do you go? But mm -hmm. I said, okay, God, we're going to trust you. So mm -hmm. we, we go home again, not sleeping, brand new baby, the whole thing. And a week later, we go back to the doctor and I still couldn't go. And I was so upset because I was like, God, I'm praying, I'm believing, I'm reading, I don't understand, but yet I still can't go to the bathroom. And remember you were in one room and I was in mm -hmm. the other room and you overheard the doctor. What did the doctor yeah, say? Yeah, so um, I remember the doctor uh, said, and they didn't know that I was passing by them and hearing, and they said that something's not right. It should have been okay already. And they were basically saying that something was wrong. Something had happened and they were thinking about recommending you to the specialist at right. that time. Yeah. Right. So I went to the bathroom and I had asked them, give me one more chance mm -hmm. to go because I knew what I drank and I, mm -hmm. they wanted to see if I could. Yeah, because it was about a level. They, they said you need, you need not to just have go a little bit. You needed to go a lot. Right. right. So I knew what I drank and I was in the bathroom and I was praying and I was crying and I was asking God, please, Lord, heal me. And yet I still couldn't go. Mm. So I was in the bathroom ready to walk out and say, God, I guess for whatever, whatever reason this time, you're not going to heal me. I don't understand, but for whatever this time, you're not going to do it. And I had my hand on the bathroom door. Mm. And then I said, no, mm. I said, because if I give up, then the devil wins. So I slammed the door and I went back into the bathroom 
And I sat on the floor mm. in the doctor's office and I started praying and saying, Lord, but you promised, but you said, but I know your word is true. And the verse that, that really came to me was from Acts chapter 3, verse 16. And I just wanted to read it. Mm. It says, and his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect, perfect soundness sound. in the presence of you all. Yeah. So it was the faith in Jesus' name. You know, I knew the scriptures. I knew Jesus says, you know, in Isaiah 53, that by his stripes I'm healed. I knew, I knew it, but yet it didn't seem like it was working. But the Bible also tells us that the devil is a thief and he comes to steal. So he was stealing my joy. Mm. He was stealing my health. He was stealing my life mm -hmm. because all I was was consumed with this physical problem. I couldn't enjoy my new baby. Mm -hmm. I was actually in physical pain. So when I started praying this scripture, all of a sudden, it wasn't a lot. I could feel everything in my body lifting. I could feel the oppression lifting. Mm -hmm. I could feel the evil leaving. I could feel my body returning back to normal as I started to confess and speak the word. Mm -hmm. And then when I left, it was like it just all came out, came out and came off. Mm -hmm. And everything returned back to normal. It was literally a miracle. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was in the room, and, and I want to share this with, with everybody listening, I was in the room with our, our, our little boy, and I was praying for Kate, and I remember distinctly in the room, I didn't understand it, but I remember that at some point as I was praying, because I had heard the doctor say this, I wasn't seeing you, I didn't know what was happening in, in the bathroom between you and Jesus, but I was interceding, and all of a sudden I discerned that there was power uh, going from the up, f like a 45 degree angle. And I remember distinctly that the power was going there. And I didn't know what that was. I, di I didn't see anything. It was just like an awareness that I didn't know what was happening, but I started to feel a peace. And power was released. And I, this is so important for people to hear because you know, even being uh, the host of The Miraculous Life or us being pastors, people sometimes think that, well, you know, things don't hit us. Well, actually, scripturally, they sometimes attack us even more. And it's so important to understand that this process that we go through, and, and I think so many people could relate to what you said, God, maybe for whatever reason, you're not gonna do it this time. And, and, and I'd say that that's when most people give up. That's right. But I knew, and you had mentioned this to me when, when I started to become a Christian and I started training with the Word of God is that if you win, you'll never lose. That's right. And so God had already demonstrated His power to me. Yes. He had al de already demonstrated His love Amen. for me. He had already demonstrated His faithfulness, not to me, but to His Word. Mm. The Bible says His Word is settled, settled. in heaven. Psalm 119, yeah. 89. Yes. So He had already demonstrated it. So if sometimes there is resistance to receiving the blessing. Yeah. But we have to push through. And what God had showed me was that his word is a sword. We know this from Ephesians chapter six. Mm -hmm. But we need to use it, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. You know, the defining moment for me in, in what happened was when you put your hand right. on the doorknob to leave. That's the moment. It's hard for me to hold the tears back because, you know, that was our story, but it hits me every time because that's a moment that it was either fight or flight. It was either I'm going to give up and I'm going to live under the lie that sometimes God won't come through, or I'm going to contend that in Christ he says yes and amen to all the promises. That is the breakthrough point. Would you agree that it was the point in which you said, I will not accept defeat. That's right. I will not 
accept that God will not come through. That's right, because it really is dependent upon our will. And that's the key, is that are you going to persevere? Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible says that faith and patience mm -hmm. inherit the promise. Yeah, I actually just turned there. Let, let, let me read that. It says, it says that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. And it says in verse 13, for when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself. That's right. That means God saying, I made the covenant to my own, he cannot fail. That's right. And since that time, the scripture that I've always held on to is from John chapter 14, yeah. when Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. So from now on, if any circumstance, if any situation, if anything tries to come against what I know to be true, I always repeat, Jesus, you say you're the truth. Yes. That means everything else is a lie. Yes. That means that it doesn't matter what the facts say. The truth says, I am healed. Amen. The truth says, I will have breakthrough. The Amen. truth says, I will overcome. Amen. That I will have victory. That I will press through yeah. and press on because... Jesus, you said it. In yeah, word. even in, in the Gospel of John, chapter 8, we were talking about this in verse 32. He said that the truth will set you free. That's right. And that's why you became free, because you held the truth. You held his word. When you pray and you ask anything that's his will, he hears you and we have the petitions. That's right. That's the truth. That led to freedom. But if we accept the lie that God is unfaithful, that God won't come through, then we're going to live without the promise becoming manifested. Right, and the, the key is that you cannot rely on your feelings. Mm. You cannot rely on your own thoughts. Yeah. Because I was in pain. My thoughts said that maybe God's not going to. That's right. My body was saying he's not doing it. Yeah. I had to ignore and disconnect my reasoning mm. and only focus on what the word says. Yeah. And the word says faith in his name. That means believing God, agreeing mm -hmm. with him that he is going to do it and that I will be perfect just like this man in the Bible. Yeah. You know, this man in Acts chapter three, and I think it's worth just reading verse one. Uh, it says in Acts chapter three, verse one, it says, now when now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, and a certain man lame, man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple. The scripture goes on to describe that this man who was crippled from birth, he was born this way, gets a chance to encounter Peter and John. And it says that the man thought that Peter was going to give him money. That's right. But in verse 6, Peter says something very interesting. He says, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. The question is, what did Peter have? What did he have? Well, very specifically, I believe that the scripture you brought, brought up in Acts 3, verse 16, says faith in his name right. made him whole. Peter said, what I have is faith in the name right. of Jesus. He considered not the man's problem. That's right. Considered not he was born that way. Consider not, and what's amazing is he didn't go and fast. He didn't have to go and pray and have a prayer meeting. He didn't have to have a worship session. He just right there in the moment fixed his eyes on this man who needed Jesus, and he gave him what he had, faith in the name of Jesus. And that's what you had. That's right. That's right. And you know that the temptation is to say it's too hard. It's too much. Mm -hmm. I can't do it. But if we realize and take the pressure off of ourselves, that God already did it, that Jesus did it already on the cross 2,000 years ago, mm -hmm. that he bore my problem in his body so that I wouldn't have to. Yeah. If we can remember that and hold on to that truth, 
then we're able to overcome right. no matter what we feel, no That's matter right. what we think, no matter what's going on. You know, we know that scripture that says, believe you've received and then you'll have it, That's Mark right. 11. That's right. That's Chapter right. 23, 24. You know, the, the word here that you brought up from Psalm 119 says, forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. So That's here's right. the question. Is the word settled in our heart? If the word is not settled in our heart here on the earth, then how will it be on earth as it is in heaven? Right. But the way that we get it settled in our heart is we have to develop a relationship with the Father, with the Son, with the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit. We have to understand God's character, mm -hmm. His love, that He's a faithful God, mm -hmm. that He's a provider, mm -hmm. that He's a Father, that He's a healer. That's right. If we can understand His characteristics, who He is, then it's mm -hmm. easy for us to believe. Yeah. You know, a lot of people judge God by how other people treat them. Mm -hmm. And they have a misunderstanding because everybody cheats, everybody lies. Mm -hmm. So when they, they see that God tells us promises, they think, well, he's going to let me down because this one in my life let me down and this one That's let right. me down. But God the Father isn't like That's right. people. That's right. He's God all by himself. Yeah, he said, I am not a man. That's right, that, that, I, I, should that lie. I should lie. He cannot lie. He cannot. Because he cannot deny himself. That's right. And, and, and if anybody be a liar, God is still faithful. Always. We need to graduate in our faith. We, right. we, we need to get past the point of evaluating who is God for real. Is he going to come through? Is he not? But let me ask you a question because I think what you're saying is, is true. But here's a challenge that I think a lot of people are working through. They go to church. Everybody's lifting their hands, singing hallelujah. They're in Bible studies, and they keep seeing defeat. They're seeing their friends, their neighbors, their families, praising the Lord, and still healing is not coming through. Right. Should that impact people? I think what happens is, again, that's looking at the circumstances. Mm. I think people have to get the focus off of themselves and other people and look to God himself and see yeah. what God says. Again, it comes down to his character. Yeah. But a lot of times what happens is this doesn't happen overnight. You know, it takes a walk, a development, a learning his word. Do you remember that one time when I had the flu? And I was home all week on the couch with the flu. Mm -hmm. And then you prayed for me at the end. Mm -hmm. And what did you say to me? Do you remember? Mm -mm. You said to me, now it's time for you to train yourself. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Because I'm not always going to be here to pray for you. Yeah. And I took that very seriously because yeah. I was out a whole week with the flu. Yeah. But I could have prayed the first day by myself and been better. <laughs> this is such an important point because we need to train. Right and get to know the Lord in intimacy in the secret place. And David developed this in Psalm 27. Right. He said, you know, I want to see the Lord. I want to behold his beauty all the days of my life. And he said that, um, that you are going to hide me, Lord, in your pavilion, in the secret place of the Most High. Mm. He knew there was safety. That's there right. was protection. There was, there was a comfort for David. That's right. That he even knew in Psalm 23, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. That's right. I'm persuaded it's because David knew God. He knew his character, That's like right. you're saying. That's right. Um, I want you to talk a little bit about how to do that. Because I know your intimacy with God. And a lot of people say, well, I've read the Bible. It doesn't work. How can you help people have a connection to maybe what have you learned in, in, in the secret place with God that, that's given you this foundation to say, I can trust him? Right. I think what happens is a lot of times people, when they come in prayer, they come and they start speaking. <laughs> you know, I think the first step is to ask God to start speaking to us and stay quiet, to start listening mm. better. I think when we become a better listener, then we're able to 
really hear him. You know, the Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. Mm. They know me and they follow me. But if we're always talking, we can't listen. Mm. And as we start to listen, God will show us in his word. Yeah. He'll show us Psalm 91. He'll show us John chapter 14. He'll show us Acts chapter 3. Mm. But if we're always talking, then there leaves no room for him to speak. Mm. So we have to get quiet. And we have to ask God, speak, Lord, Mm. open the eyes of my understanding, teach me, show me. I think this is a big difference between people knowing about God. That's right. Versus knowing God. That's right. The intimacy with the Father, too, I think that a lot of people know him as Elohim, as Adonai, as God, instead of crying out Abba. Right. Could you talk a little bit about, as you're listening to God, what you've learned about the Father? Well, I think it's important because, you know, when we ask Him and we seek Him, you can see that His love is not like any human Mm -hmm. love. You know, the fact that He would give His Son for a sinner like me, for someone who, you know, had has shortcomings, who mm-hmm. fails every day. Yeah. But that's how good he is. Mm. That he doesn't love me because of what I do, mm. of, of my failures. Mm. He loves me because he is love. Amen. He can't be anything but. Amen. Same thing with peace. He is peace. He mm. can't be anything but peace. That's right. So when he comes, he comes with a perfect love. He comes with, it's okay. Yeah. You made a mistake, it's all right. Not you should have. Yeah. Shame on you. You need to get this right. That's not the Father's heart. The Father's heart is, yeah, you messed up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Let me try and teach you how to do better next time. Yeah, I think this is so, so important in the book of Hebrews. Um, it says that God will neither leave you That's right. nor forsake you. And, and, and I just want you to be encouraged as you're hearing this because God will never leave you on your worst day God will not depart from Never. you. Never. But I think too many people give up on God. Too many people give up on the Lord. And we need to repent. We need to come back. We, we need to, to, to come back and return to the place and of, of, of purity that says, Lord, you sent your son to die for me. I am willing to put my trust in you and no longer lose heart. Pastor Kate, will you take a moment and pray a prayer for those people who have maybe gotten tired, discouraged, felt let down, maybe even angry with God, that they can have that restoration and even pray for their healing Amen. As, as they're listening now? Yes. Well, Father, we just thank you so much for your love. We just thank you for your patience. We thank you for your heart. And we just pray right now for everybody who's struggling Lord, I pray that you would reveal your love and your heart for these people, Lord. And I just pray, God, that you would speak the right scripture that they can meditate on, the right word. Lord God, if they're angry, that may be for repentance or unforgiveness. Lord God, I pray that you would show and you would speak what they need to do, Lord God, in their heart. And I know, Lord God, your word says that you do exceedingly, abundantly, more than we could ask or think. So I just pray for a supernatural touch on everybody who's watching, everybody who's at home, everybody who's struggling, Lord God, that they would say, it's not me, it's God. And he already promised it. The truth says, you have already been healed. Receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You pray that prayer right now with Pastor Kate. I want you to do what you couldn't do. I want you to hold on to God's word. I want you to, from this moment on, refuse to allow discouragement or the lies of the enemy to ever, 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 ever stop you from praying. Jesus Christ said, he said, men always ought to pray and to never lose heart. This is a key to living the miraculous life with Jesus Christ. You can do it. You were made to do it. The Holy Spirit 
is there, ready to teach you, and to bring you into intimate places with Jesus. You don't even need to be at church on Sunday. Mm -hmm. You can do it in your bedroom. You can do it in a doctor's office, on the floor of a bathroom. Amen. But may you contend mm -hmm. to not receive anything less than what the very blood of Jesus Christ has provided for you. We thank you so much for being with us today, and I pray that you will share your testimony with us, and may God bless you abundantly in His grace, love, and mercy. Hey, God bless. My name is Steve Hannett, and I'm the founder of Every House, the ministry that produces the miraculous life. I'd like today to talk with you about prayerfully becoming a financial partner with our ministry to get the word of God out to the nations. You know, we've got an amazing team that's dedicated to seeing lives change. Many people don't know that when they're becoming a financial partner, that they're literally joining the work with us and literally becoming part of the family to produce fruit in the nations. Now, we understand that your tithes belong to your local church, and we encourage you to be faithful to your local congregation. So we also understand that there are offerings that you can invest in ministries like Every House to help support the work that we're doing. Simply go to everyhousenow.org, click the Give button, and you'll be presented with a series of options of how to partner with us. God bless you, and we thank you in advance for your love. We pray you've been blessed by The Miraculous Life and know the Lord Jesus desires His best in your life. The Miraculous Life is a production of Every House, a missions ministry focused on releasing the power of God, establishing strong churches, and developing sound leaders who advance the kingdom of God. Your love gift to Every House is tax deductible in accordance with the law. We believe your tithes belong to your local church and your donations to our ministry are received as offerings for the advancement of the Great Commission.